You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, time for our Weekly Education Matters segment. Today, we look at Peer Forward. It's an organization that trains high school and college students to work with their peers to help them achieve their goals. Joining me now is Gary Lennon, CEO of Peer Forward. All right, Gary, glad to have, help, glad to have you on the show. So how are they helping them? So, I mean, how, how, does, how does this work? Sure. I mean, so I uh, want thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, our model is uh, really, really simple in my mind, right? It's we, what we believe is that a 17 year old is more inclined to listen to another 17 year old at the end of the day. And so how do we leverage or harness that power of peer influence in order to be able to support individuals in that space? And so we train young adults who are the most influential ones in their school communities um, and have them be able to help their friends either get into college or get through college. So, and, and, and so this is really focusing on not necessarily what you're going to major in, but really uh, how do you survive the rigors of college? Can you read that? Sorry. I said, it's not, this is not really about what you're going to major in or your career. It's really about how to survive the rigors uh, of being away from home and getting through life now, probably for the first time on your own. Yep, exactly. You know, what we feel is like individuals have the tenacity in order to be able to get through. But one of the major barriers that stops an an individual from graduating, it's about the community that's not being built. And so when you have the ability to go ahead and find individuals that are just like you, that are going through the same experiences just like you, these individuals are much more inclined to be able to graduate, want to be able to stay because they've now been able to identify themselves with other individuals around them to be able to build that community and ultimately (coughs) graduate. And so how many, how many folks have you had go through this program thus far? Sure. So we've been around for almost 25 years. We've had the opportunity to work with over 350,000 students wow. across the country. It's a national organization that uh, started in Washington, D.C. in a community center by our former co-founders. And we've had the opportunity then from there to be able to grow, to be able to support individuals in New York, California, Florida, uh, Texas, I mean, even in the hills of Kentucky and West Virginia, our goal is about working with um, low income, underprivileged, you know, minority students across uh, the board to make sure that they can actually have a chance to fight with everyone else. It's about leveling the playing field. All right. Got some questions from my panelists. I'll go to Amisha Cross first. Amisha, what's your question for Gary? Well, first and foremost, I'm thankful that you mentioned that community aspect. When people think about college, they often think that there are higher dropout rates or a significant dropout rate from uh, populations of color because of finances. And we know that, you know, anybody who's working in education, and I have, knows that when you do that, you're, you're discounting the fact that community really matters. Um, as a first generation college student, I know that it was me going to a PWI and knowing how much I had to do to focus in and get that level of understanding and trust that wasn't necessarily there for me. Um, when we're going to this next, you know, this next generation of college students and you see so many students who have this reinvigorated love or are paying closer attention to HBCUs, what do you say to those students who are still um, who are still, you know, receiving higher financial aid funding and things from PWIs? And I have counseled several of those. So it wasn't that they didn't want to go to an HBCU. It was that they got more funding from a state school that happened to be a PWI. What do you tell those students who are going to be walking into a classroom and a culture that's very different from the neighborhood school that they graduated from? You know, you raise a great point. I mean, as an individual, I went to Cornell University, which is obviously one of the, you know, a huge PWI, um, one of the best uh, schools in the country. And But I came from Harlem, New York, you know, where everybody that I looked around was just like me. They looked like me, they talked like me, they worked like me. We, they walked like me. I um, mean, and going into there, there was a significant cultural uh, disparity that we've, uh, that I encountered. So anybody that's looking to go into any type of school, and truth be told, let's be very clear, whether you go into an HBCU or a PWI, it's still about a cultural fit, regardless of your skin color of it. So you need to make sure that any school that you're going to, you feel comfortable enough to feel like you have the adequate resources, the adequate support that you're going to need, because college is not easy at all. There's days where you're going to say, you know what, why am I doing this? 
But if you don't have the adequate resources and you feel as if you're not connected to the community, then that's not the right fit. So make sure that you're doing your homework beforehand. Go to the campus. Talk to the individuals that are there. And if it works for you and they have the adequate resources, that's the type of one that you need. Because we recognize that financial aid is still a barrier for many of us that come from low-income communities for certain. And while PWIs give a lot of money, it doesn't mean that they're giving you all the money that's available to you. That's why we have scholarships that are available. Michael. But do your due diligence and making sure that you go out. Michael M. Hotel. Yeah, um, well, number one, I, I congratulate you on what you're doing. Um, when I used to do educational consulting, I, I would go into high schools and I was doing educational consulting um, for a local community college here in Detroit. And we were uh, promoting dual enrollment. So I was wondering if um, I, I know a lot of times it's hard to, to keep uh, high school students engaged, especially if they're working on the weekends or working at night, things like that. Um, is dual enrollment uh, something that you all participate in or or push at all? And th those that may not know, uh, dual enrollment means when you're in high school, you can also take classes at a local community college. And a lot of times uh, school districts will have agreements with community colleges. So when a, ch when a child graduates from high school, they can also graduate with associate's degree, up to an associate's degree from a community college. So 100% I promote it. What, what has been, what, ha what have been like the results uh, uh, of it dealing with dual enrollment and maybe what are some of the, um, one, one of the things that we, one of the things that we did was to help, um, high school students, uh, also get into different programs or figure out what they wanted to do, what, what they wanted to major in in college. So what are some, maybe some of the hot fields that you're directing, um, uh, your participants toward to me? Sure, thank you. Uh for that question. So in reference to dual enrollment, I definitely recommend at the fact that it's college credits for free. Yeah. Go for yeah. it. You want to make sure that you're leveraging that as much as you can, because as we know, college in general is expensive for many individuals um, mm -hmm. in this respect. And if you can get anything for free earlier on, it allows you to be able to graduate earlier. Uh, interesting uh, fact that everybody needs to understand is that individuals from low income communities are graduating by the age of 26, there are only 12% of individuals that are graduating by the age of 26. We have an issue within this country. And that's because of the financial barriers. That's because of the cultural fit. That's because of individuals not being selected to the right college. So mm -hmm. anytime that you get the chance to go ahead and, and minimize that financial gap, I tell you to take advantage of it. Some of the interesting fields that people are going into, uh, you know, when we're talking with students, they love seeing it. They love anything around forensic science. They're loving anything within the STEM field. That is the hot area. Right. Technology is really, really big. You'd be surprised at how many of our young folks, I mean, for us that are older, you know, I'm always having an issue on my computer. Ask me to ask my nephew to fix something, he fixes it in two seconds, and he's never been trained in it. So STEM and technology are hot fields that I recommend everyone to go into because that's the wave of the future. Thinking about AI, thinking about, and then some of our legacy things. When you're thinking about the medical field, obviously in light of COVID and everything else, we need more uh, nurses, we need more doctors, we need individuals in the healthcare field to be able to support uh, individuals that are actually graduating and getting older and they need that actual care. All right, Gary. So I think the program is phenomenal and, and uh, Thank you for, for what you're doing. I guess I want to know, how do you select the peers, right? What is the process that you go through in selecting the peers? And then how do you then train and develop them to have the skills necessary uh, to help each other through this process? Sure, great question. So for us, it's not about academics. We believe um, that the most influential person, as I mentioned earlier, is your friend. So we look at, it could be that person that's walking down the hallway, that could be the class clown. But it's individuals that talk and people listen to. It could be something that they wear that people are watching. Who are the individuals that actually impact their friends um, that people want to make sure uh, to move with? So we leverage those young folks in order to be able to create a movement. So we train them each summer at a, a, a college workshop where they get the chance to build up on their leadership skills. They learn this ideology about how do you go from self to service? How do you not stop thinking about yourself anymore? And how do you make sure that you're saying, how do I change my own community? 
So I learned that piece. I learned about financial aid. I learned about the different components of um, the college application process. We hired the most skilled college counselors that normally individuals in the top quartile, they're paying three, $400 an hour for. Our students get it for free. So they, get, they learn all the tactics that have already been uh, dismantled and not given to all of our public school systems. So now that we've been part of that information on them, they're directly responsible for going and helping their friends to be able to do it. All right, then. Gary, how can people get more information? Where can they get more information? Sorry. How can they get more information on your organization? Where to yeah, go? So please, um, if anyone, uh, you can find us at www.peerforward.org. That's P-E-E-R-F-O-R-W-A-R-D.org. Um, definitely please go ahead and follow us. Uh, we have a huge uh, following that's happening at the high school and the college level across the country. Uh, we were formerly known as College Summit, so all of our College Summit former legacy folks, you know exactly who we are. Please reach out. We would love to go ahead and support you all. Uh, of course, they never go wrong with Cornell, of course, that being where Alpha Phi Alpha was founded. So, uh, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> yep, of course. <laughs> That's how it is. Sorry, Michael M. Hotel. Y'all Sigma. I knew you were going to work that in. Y'all sig Sigmas don't get a shout out. All right, Gary, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. appreciate it. All right, folks, back to our whole unfiltered video in just one minute. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.